Hello and welcome to part 3 of our tool tutorial about the text tool. In this one we want to concentrate on the shading tab and uh, as we did before with the layout and the transform tab the shading tab is another creative playground for you. To start on top you will see eight buttons here. These buttons stand for the eight shaders that actually are available with each text plus tool. The first one is the default shader which by default is enabled. If you switch that off you won't see any text at all. Just as a very quick example if you go to the second shader that one defaults to a red outline the third one defaults to a black drop shadow but we're gonna dive into that one later on. Let's go back to shader 1. The next slider is the opacity. So in each of these shaders you can define how opaque in terms of the alpha channel your actual text is. You can also set the priority in terms of back and front. So if you have multiple shaders, multiple texts layered on top of each other, you can define for every one of those what their priority is in terms of rendering. Also you can define the mode in which those layers are mixed together. Then we have the appearance buttons here. So by default it's a filled text. You can also switch that to outline or to a filled backdrop or an outline backdrop for your individual characters. In outline mode you also have a thickness slider which defines the thickness of the outline. I will dive a bit deeper into the outline setting when we come to the second shader tab. The next option covers the type of fill. So right now we have a solid fill but we can also use a gradient or any image on the flow. So for example if we add a fast noise tool here, go to color and do something like maybe this we can use that as an image to map our text. Let's stick with solid. Then of course you can set the color. Like for example give this a grayish look or maybe make it some sort of yellowish here. The next option are the softness and glow sliders. So again on each of your shadings you can apply individual softness for X and Y. And of course all these sliders can be animated. Also if you applied softness you have the option to add glow to that. And then you have an individual transform for each of the shaders. So you can define your offset Z, you can define your pivot point for each of the shaders pivot Z, you can define the angle X, Y and Z and that's all in addition to what we talked about in the Layout and Transform tab. So shading gives you another option to modify the appearance of your characters. Again, you've got Shear, Y, Shear X controls and individual X and Y size controls. Let's switch over to another shading and activate shading number 2, which as I said before, defaults to a red outline. Let's see what we can do with this. So for example if we switch this to gradient you will see that out of a sudden I get something like a metallic highlight here. Let's adjust the thickness a little bit and go into our mapping angle. Animating the mapping angle would give you something like a traveling highlight around your edges. And also you can define how your edges should look. So for example it defaults to rounded but I normally go for sharp because sharp actually mimics the appearance of the original font. Rounded or bevel is another option. Let's play around with the shading gradient for a second. 
So to make this even more metallic looking, we could define a much sharper transition here. And let's say this shouldn't be black, but something like a subtle gray here. Animate this, and there you go. You can also influence the mapping size. the mapping aspect and the mapping level. The mapping level defaults to character but this can also be set to full image so the gradient we defined is applied to the full extent of the image. Or you can set it to text so the gradient is applied to the extent of the text. Line means it is applied to individual lines so if we add more text here another line like so. You see the mapping is applied to each line individually. Word means it is applied individually to each word, which best can be seen if we again move our mapping angle here. And character means it's applied to each individual character. So again many ways to spice up your motion graphics here. Let's add some rotation here in the Layout tab. Go back to our shading and make it a bit thicker here. Well now you see this doesn't look really right because I've got perspective on my text but no real perspective on the thickness of the outline. You can switch to Adapt Thickness to Perspective and then you see that you've got smaller outlines on the back and bigger outlines on the front which of course updates when you change your layout rotation. Again you can apply individual softness to your second shading now. So let's say this should like fade out a bit in Y and just a little bit in X and it should have some glow like so. Well, that's maybe a bit too much. Maybe like so. And then in the gradient, let's make this more bluish here. Like so. And of course, you can add a little X rotation here to create something like that. And of course, combine all this with what we learned so far. Like for example put this on a circle, bring it down a bit, rotate the entire thing like so. It really is a creative playground here in the text tool. We're going to talk about some other tabs in the next tutorial. Thanks for your time and stay tuned.